Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to tune your vocals using the new tone plugin in FL Studio. It comes with the signature edition and it runs inside FL Studio a little bit like Melodyne so you can adjust the time and the pitch of any notes, effectively tuning your notes, making your performance perfect, you can adjust your vibrato, the transition times, you can change words to a different pitch or, or note entirely. So let's just get right into it and find out how to use this plugin. In this tutorial I'm going to be using two examples and by the end of it you should be really confident confident with new tone, especially for toning your own vocals and potentially creating harmonies too. I'm going to be using a sentence from a song uh, by David Ottostad. He's got a really cool project called the Workday Release. I've left all his socials in the description. He's a really great resource for singing, songwriting. So if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. He'll be sort of trolling through there and answering as many as he can. And I also want to say putting your vocal out on YouTube like this, especially on this channel, it's a really vulnerable thing to do. It's a really brave thing to do. So I want to thank David before we start for letting me pick apart his vocal. He's a really good singer, but in these we were doing three minute takes. So the very start to the very end of the song in one take, I've had to pick out sentences where there's a few little tuning instabilities and uh, it's really brave of him to let me do that. So I just want to thank him for letting us do that so that we can all gain from this. So let's take a listen to the first sentence, which is sort of a sung phrase. But in the same room, what if we fall way back to when? But in the same room, what if we fall way back to when? It's 95% the way there. If it was just staying with guitar and vocal, I'd probably leave it the way it is. But room and fall. They have a lot of vibrato, but they're ever so slightly flat. And then to when. So when he sings when... Back to when. when starts too low and then it drifts up to the right note and then finishes just over with the vibrato and you can hear the reverb if I increase the reverb it really takes away the wrong note here to when. To when. it just doesn't sound right it sounds sour and one of the problems with this is that when I stack loads of synthesizers against this and reverb those tiny little problems are going to become amplified let's get right into the pitch correction you can load new tone on any insert so if you have a mixer insert here you can just open it up and if you have the signature edition of FL Studio you can just load new tone right here you can then drag in any wave file or the quick way to do it double left click on your file right click in this window edit in pitch corrector. It's gonna load it up in new tone for you. So what this is, is uh, showing you each note or each word broken apart into its respective pitch. Sometimes a word holds one note, for instance, room. room. And sometimes words are, are split between multiple pitches if the singer's doing a run. At the left hand side, we have a keyboard so we know which notes they are. For instance, in this same room is G, A, B, A. But in the same room, you can also resize this window, drag from the bottom right to resize it, go to the top bar, press enter. You can resize it to be the whole size of your screen. You can also use the scroll bars at the side just to get things sitting perfectly. Quick tips, if you hold alt and scroll, you can get more vertical resolution. If you hold control and scroll, you can zoom in like this, which is great. New tone can be used in loads of different ways. Firstly, you can simply just drag a note and drag it onto any pitch you like. I'm gonna make, I'm just gonna go to the top menu here because I have snap to scale selected. I'm just gonna turn that off. So any note you like, you can change the melody. But in the same room, but in the same room, what if we fall? So you can use it like that to completely change the melody if you've sung the wrong notes. Let's get into a little bit more detail. So this orange trace represents the exact pitch at any one time in the performance. And if you drag the cursor along, in the same room, it follows along with that. Something I'm going to do quickly is just press control and I'm just going to loop a section so that we've got something to work with here. Each of the words has this sort of orange shadow behind it. Now, if you just go onto one and right click, it locks it to that nearest note that's been detected. Sometimes the nearest note isn't the correct note, so it's something to be aware of. And what I'm just going to do right now is just go into this cut icon and I'm going to select snap to scale. I'm going to make sure that the right scale is selected for this song. Before we go into any precise editing, I'm going to show these three global controls at the top. Center, variation, transition time. So center centers it onto the nearest note. If you look at these ones here, you can see that if I increase the center, it just centers it onto the nearest average note. Variation 
down is going to flatten all the pitch variation. No vibrato, no sort of warbling, and then all the way up just increases all of that stuff and makes it really unstable. Transition time changes the time between the transitions. So here we go. For instance here, it just cuts it so that it's really, really sharp. So if I play this, it's going to sound awful. It's going to sound like auto-tune robot. But in the same room, what if we fall way back to when? Technically perfect, but really it's garbage. So I'm just going to reset that. Using the center dial is sometimes okay, but I prefer to do all the pitch correction manually. And the best way to do this is look at individual notes. So if you select a note, you'll see that all these options open up. So let's just go from the top to the bottom. Volume. If you left click and drag at the top here where it says volume, you can change the volume of a note. So uh, the volume of an individual word. Over to the right in this green section, you can change the gain at the start of the word and you can change the gain at the end. When it gets back to 100%, that's you back to where you started. At the bottom is where we start looking at pitch. So you can change the variation, which kind of does the same thing as the center, which is going to get rid of all your vibrato. Or you can increase the variation, which is going to intensify that vibrato. You can drag these green and red sections out at the side and these affect the transition pitch. So for instance, if I drag this down, a lot, the end of this word is going to pitch down. Same room, what? This section at the left middle lets you change the length of a word. So it sort of elastically shifts the word in case your singer wasn't singing in time. Hold Alt and you get exact fine control over that. At the end here is a formant shift. If you were to shift your whole note up by dragging in the middle, that's a left click and drag, up to this note for instance. In the same room, it might then sound a little bit too high pitched. So what you can do is left click and drag here and pull the shift down slightly. In the same room. And it might make it sound more natural. If you start pushing it too far up, it's going to sound like a chipmunk. In the same room. It just sounds really, really silly. So I tend to leave that alone. When it comes to the fine pitch correction, most professionals are in agreement about a technique that works really well sort of 99% of the time. And what it is, is using a cut tool. So you can select here or press C on your keyboard. And you just chop up each note into the smallest sections that you can. And then you deselect the cut tool and you right click mm. and you right click to snap it into the nearest pitch. Same room. And it tends to preserve a lot of the sort of qualities of the voice that you want while still giving you really quite perfect pitch. We haven't got rid of all of this vibrato or anything. We've just snapped that vibrato so that it's a little bit more centered. If you go back up to this edit menu again and you change the snap to grid from quarter to eighth, you can get in and cut these up even more finely. I don't usually find that this is necessary, but it's just something you can do if you're really struggling. Now I'm going to go through and pitch this whole thing. I might speed up some of these sections, but basically I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just cutting and then I'm just snapping them in. And then all the while I'm listening. Don't just do stuff because the orange trace mm. tells you it has to be done. For instance, the orange trace kind of jumps up and down here rapidly. It's probably because there's an S or there's a plosive sound or something that's messing it up. But in the same room. Yeah, the same. The S there is being detected as higher pitched, but it actually sounds fine. But in the same room. This one here definitely goes too high. But in the same room, what if we fall? Through this whole thing. But in the same room, what if we fall? We fall way back to what if we fall? And again, like I said, fall just started too low and ended up a little bit too high. We fall. What if we fall? What if we fall way back to way back goes too low? Let's cut those up again. What if we fall way back to when? What if we fall way back to when? And then when, just as you could visibly see, it started far too low and uh, and then it got a little bit too high at the end. Maybe too much variation here on this end of the vibrato. But I want to make sure that when still sounds really human. Way back to when, when, when. And then this section here sounds a little bit robotic. Way back to when. It's, it sort of sounds a little bit silly, so I'm going to sort of adjust these transitions and make sure that it's not too sharp or anything. To when, but in. Something to also note is that often when you play back inside Newtone, it gives you all sorts of weird artifacts, clicks and pops. These usually all disappear once you drag the audio back out. So once you're finished with this, 
I'm going to select this tool up here, drag selection. I'm just going to drag it back onto the playlist. Now I'm going to line it up with the previous audio, just zoom in a little bit. Now this is the most important step. And what I'd recommend doing here is once you finish tuning one, I just go on to a new bit, work on something else, maybe tweak some EQ, adjust some levels, then come back to it a few minutes later, because at this point, your, your brain is too focused on the pitch and you're probably like hearing problems where there aren't problems. So once you've taken a slight break, come back and listen to it in context. We're in the same room, what if we fall way back to when? Now I'm really gonna increase this reverb here so that I can hear this bit that was clearly a problem last time, when. When, when. You can hear the reverb from when. When. Seems to be in the right tune with the guitar. If I listen to the old one. When, when. New one. When. Old one. When. The old one's really low pitched. If I go back to this section as well, let's listen to other sections. Back, 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 back. You can hear that this one's like really sour sounding by comparison. Obviously I'd never have the reverb that high, but it's good for identifying problems. So I think this one sounds okay. There might be areas that are a little bit too robotic, but let's just take one more listen. But in the same room, what if we fall way back to when? So the two when needs some work. Really, I'd want to look at that again, but overall, it doesn't sound like it's gone through auto-tune. It doesn't sound really stupid or robotic. And I still think that it's respectful to David's vo vocal and his skill. I'm not just flattening it out and trying to make it my version of perfect. There are a few more interesting tools inside Newtone though. So one of them is the time correction tool. You saw me tweak some of the notes here, but if you click up here in this clock, you can actually, it, it sort of slices the waveform like this. But in the same room, what if we fall away? But in the same room, what if we fall away? And you can change the time of each note. Now it sounds a bit like broken inside here. It tends to sound better when you drag it out, but I don't tend to use this very much. But if you know something was out of time, you can slice it and pull it back to where you want it to be. Also inside the pitch correction section, if I go center it, take the variation down, say I'm gonna select a note. This is one advanced editing mode, but if you go into the edit tool again, you can do advanced edit vibrato. And what this lets you do is it changes the controls. So inside this blue area, if I drag to the side, vibrato starts getting added. Then if I drag up at the end, it changes the vibrato's end amplitude. And at the start, the start amplitude. So sometimes if you flattened a word and you want to add some vibrato back, you can do this. Fall, fall, fall. Which sounds uh, quite different from. Fall, 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 fall. Fall. And you can start kind of going crazy with it. I don't like doing this with the voice, but where I do find it's useful is if you've recorded a violin or a cello, just a single note, no vibrato, this can actually make it sound pretty realistic. It's never going to be as good as real vibrato, but it's, it's kind of close, close enough, especially if it's buried in the mix. Another really cool feature, once you've centered, removed all the transition times and, and taken the variation down, is that you can use this to copy the MIDI information in here or just send it straight to the piano roll. So you can copy it and paste it into a synthesizer. So say you have a vocal melody during the chorus and you want a synthesizer, a synth lead to copy it. You can get that synth to copy the exact same notes by converting this audio into MIDI. I might make a whole new tutorial about that because it's actually quite a useful feature. Um, it's just important to know that you have it there, especially if you're not very good at figuring out melodies. Maybe if you hear something, you're not very good at playing it again on a piano. It's not a, a strong skill of mine either. So that's quite useful for me. Now it's time for the second part of the tutorial, which is using it for this vocal pad stack here. So I'm going to show you the final result. This is what we did. Now there will be more vocals added around that and there's more instruments to be added, but I don't want to give the whole song away right now. And this is created of loads of little layers where he's just singing a single note, then moving to another, then to another. But underneath it, I have the originals which weren't tuned and they sound really sour like this, mainly because of the reverb. I'll show you. Oh. 
just really, really doesn't sound good. And the reason for this is that we recorded them super late at night. David wasn't really ready for them. I didn't give him enough volume in his headphones so he could barely hear what he was doing. And what ended up happening was that he started each note just a little bit flat. And then he did get to the right note. And then he had to do the whole thing again. So it just went flat, cracked, flat, cracked, flat, cracked. And because I've drowned these in so much reverb, the start bit that's flat is getting dragged across the whole, you know, for a few seconds. And that tiny little bit of a note that's wrong makes the whole thing sound wrong, uh, which is obviously a big problem. Whereas in the pitched ones, I've removed that. So how you do this is, is really straightforward. Double left click, right click, edit in pitch corrector. If I just take all of this stuff off again, you'll see what I mean. It starts on the wrong note. This D sharp is not in the scale of our song. Just this little bit here. Uh, He's at the right note here. Uh, 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 but he didn't start on the right note. I'm just going to turn off the advanced edit vibrato. And you can get away with quite a lot more here. So what you can do, if you have your scale selected, just center it and take the variation down. And that is probably all you have to do. Uh, that for me works nine times out of ten. Sometimes I'll leave in a little bit of variation. However, if it's drifting like this, it's still a problem. It's best to cut these and snap them back in. So you can still cut them all up into individual chunks and snap them in. But sometimes if you're being honest with yourself and you listen to A and B, it can sometimes not sound any better than simply just ramming the variation down, um, which is a shame because I like to think that putting in hard work pays off. But in this case, sometimes this technique just is easier to do by just using the macros at the top here, the, the main controls. One thing I would say, however, is that new tone seems to really mess up breaths. So sometimes a breath, I'm not sure about this one. Ah, it's got this weird inhuman quality to it. It's got this raspiness to it sounds almost metallic it's often really good with the main vocals to cut these breaths out of the new tone performance and take the original breaths from the untuned vocals cut those and just drag them into the right place it's probably you know it's probably about 10 minutes of work for the whole song but it's definitely worth it because when you're tuning vocals you know you want to preserve as much of the human element as you can and things like breaths there's something that listeners actually want to hear not too loud but you need to hear them it, it reminds people that you're human it's it's important if you cut all the breaths out of a vocal performance things start sounding really really silly so anyway after you've done that you simply use the drag tool again drag the selection to your playlist send it to wherever you send it to and it's all good so when you do that technique across all of them so just repeat the same process six times uh, you'll end up with something like this something else that's important to note is that if I edit it in the pitch corrector again you can actually use this to completely change up your melodies so you might want to drag this up drag this down let me just get that snap to scale right it should be this one you can actually change the melody entirely you might want to try that you might want to try this start sounding a little bit robotic at the top i'm not going to lie it doesn't sound that good but you can use this to experiment with different melodies and this is really useful for a singer because sometimes they try something but when they're in the vocal booth or in, in the front of the mic they don't think of the best idea right away and sometimes it's good to just say hey look i tried this as a harmony do you want to hear what it sounds like if you like it then you can sing it and this is something we've done quite a lot in the past we'll synthesize harmonies see what they sound like if we like them, we'll delete the we'll delete the pitched version and we'll sing them the right way, knowing what the harmony is going to sound like. It's just another tool at your disposal. Sometimes it's important to remember that you can use pitch correction just to figure stuff out. You don't have to live with it forever. You can figure stuff out and then go and record a real version. Something that I've found, I've done background vocals a couple of times and, you know, I say that I'm terrible at singing. I, I really am, but I want to try and get better. When I sing and record it i can open up a new tone and i can see what my problems are i always usually singers have the same problems over and over again it cause you see it in patterns over and over and i always start start words too low just way too low and then i slowly drift up usually hit the right note and then i'm quite unstable on it so when i can see that i do that on every single word it just lets me know something about my vocal cords and over time you can start becoming more and more accurate with it so sometimes as a singer people 
like there's such a taboo around pitch correction, but really if you use it as an analysis tool to help you figure out what you're doing wrong, it can help you improve. And I wouldn't recommend using heavy pitch correction on, on all your vocals. It's just not something that is probably going to make them sound much better in the long run. I think people still prefer a real vulnerable vocal sound sometimes. I think it just sounds more real, like I said, more vulnerable, more emotional. And, uh, and that's where I think music is heading back to. Um, however, if you want to use pitch correction, it's also absolutely fine. So I hope this tutorial has been useful for you. I hope you gained a lot from it. And I just want to thank David again for letting us, for letting me butcher his vocals in this tutorial. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.